Australian Antarctic expeditioners are testing new medical technology to see whether it could help astronauts on space missions. Joining us live now is Dr Jeff Ayton. He's the Chief Medical Officer of the Australian Antarctic Division. Jeff, appreciate your time. Thank you. Just tell us a bit more about what you're working on. How closely aligned are the conditions we might see uh, in places like Antarctica and, and in space? Yeah, thanks, Ash. And it's an exciting uh, collaboration which we've just announced to uh, do research coordination and implement research that is uh, going to inform space travel for astronauts, but also the safety and health and well-being of uh, Australian Antarctic uh, expeditioners, and hopefully translate that back to healthcare on Earth. And some of this technology is like a uh, ultrasound technology that we, we're utilising currently. Uh, Trish is the Translational Institute of Space Health, uh, which is empowered by the NASA Human Research Program. And this collaboration is a unique opportunity for us to uh, benefit and leverage off their technologies. I had the pleasure of interviewing the astronaut Chris Hadfield a few weeks ago and he was telling me how every year he fronts up to Florida, to NASA, and they do a heap of tests on him, you know, all sorts of things, everything you can imagine, basically. He described the feeling of being a bit of a guinea pig, in a sense, because no one really knows what the longer-term impacts of being in space are on the human body and, and the brain in particular. What is the current thinking about whether there is actually a major impact on astronauts' bodies or for scientists and researchers in Antarctica as well in terms of spending time in these sorts of uh, remote locations? Yeah, so that's exactly the sort of uh, uh, research that we're looking at and utilising Australia's Antarctic research stations, which have total isolation uh, for up to nine months over winter and the health challenges that can be posed in supporting and medically looking after our Australian Antarctic expeditions that can uh, inform those planning similar challenges in uh, space and uh, long duration moon to Mars travel. Health challenges, we don't have some of the health challenges such as radiation and uh, which are the you know, long-term effects that Chris Hadfield will be talking about. Um, but uh, we do have challenges of uh, how do people get on together, their, their psychological health and well-being, uh, their immunology, their physiology. And you know, where it comes down to Australia has unique capabilities in supporting, uh, medically supporting uh, people in remote communities such as Antarctica, but also uh, right across Australia, we have a well, world-renowned record in in uh, understanding and how best to look after our people in rural and remote Australia. Yeah, I guess the physical side is one thing, but the mental health impacts of of being in such a remote area without a lot of human contact, I mean, that must be something that... Um, people working with you come across all the time. Yeah, so the Trish uh, collaboration, the research collaboration, will look at some of those things and how best do we select um, expeditioners to go to Antarctica and how can that inform uh, those planning long duration moon to Mars uh, type missions, but also uh, how do we select teams and their, their team cohesion and how do we support them? As you go out from Moon to Mars, you're re relying on more autonomy, uh, less communication and less uh, access back to Earth. And so we need to develop those technologies and this collaboration will help to uh, do that. So, uh, for example, the, the ultrasound uh, demonstration project we're conducting in Antarctica at the moment and uh, hope to be doing the same uh, ultrasound project on the Polaris Dawn mission in the coming months in space. We look forward to seeing how it goes and following up with you to seeing what you find out. Dr Jeff Hayden, really appreciate your time. Thank you.